I do this. Hi everyone, we're just getting things ready here at the beach, so please stay tuned, we're going to get started right at 9.30, until then we'll give you a few peaceful moments with the sound of the waves. And if you've just joined us, um, we are broadcasting from Flag Ponds Nature Park. And we are just kind of getting things set up here at the beach. And we'll be getting started in just a minute or so. So thanks for tuning in. everybody this is Tanya and Kim at Flag Ponds Nature Park and we're just about to get started so get yourselves comfortable cross your fingers and toes that we'll be able to see some horseshoe crabs tonight the tide is coming in <laughs> as um, as you can see <laughs> that might be our cue that might be our cue. How's our time? 9.30. Exactly. Hi everybody, this is Tanya Gale with Calvert County Natural Resources Division and joining me tonight is Kim Curran <laughs> <laughs> and um, we are here at Flag Ponds Nature Park 
in Calvert County, Maryland. We had originally planned a an in-person horseshoe crab walk for this evening, but of course, as with many other things this spring, plans have changed. So um, we're hoping to do tonight what is um, the next best thing, as close as we can come to having people join us down at the beach tonight to uh, take a look for some horseshoe crabs. Uh, Kim, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about our plans for tonight? Okay, so basically our plan is we're going to take a walk down the beach and unfortunately we have no direct control over whether or not we actually will see horseshoe crabs. We're really hoping that we are going to see some coming up, but um, we're going to take a walk and we're going to take a look. And if it looks like we've been walking for a little while and we haven't really seen anything, it is possible that we might put the live video on hold. If that's the case, we'll let everybody know that's what we're doing. Don't go too far. Just hang tight with us. And hopefully if we do come across some that are coming up, um, then we'll bring the live back so that you guys will get to see what we see. Okay, and one more thing before we go. Uh, I don't know if I said this before, but I meant to. It's our first live stream performance. <laughs> so please bear with us. Um, and feel free. We love to see. It's nice um, to see your comments to let us know that we're not actually here just talking to ourselves. It's our, our first program without people, without an audience, at least here with us. So um, please put your uh, questions in the comments or if our video is um, choppy or sound is weird, please let us know. And if we can't fix um, the issues for tonight, we'll try and do better for next time. Okay, are you guys ready? <laughs> Yay, I'm excited, Meg. We've got lots of cool people here. The, the fun thing about this, hi, Jesse, <laughs> is that um, we can see people joining us from all over the place. Kim, you are most welcome. Um, like I said, I'd be really excited to be here with um, other people <laughs> in addition to Kim, but this is the best we can do. Hi, Maggie. So people can join us from all over the place. Okay, so we're gonna start walking. Um, I'm gonna turn the camera back around so that you guys can kind of see what we're seeing. We did see some horseshoe crabs earlier tonight. So cross your fingers, here we go. We're going to do a little bit of talking as we walk, but um, we also just want this to be uh, as much of a sensory experience as it can be. Someone, I've missed the comment, was mentioning the sound. It is an awesome sound. Um, thankfully, there's not too much wave action tonight. That's perfect for what we want to do. Horseshoe crabs. Oh, there's some little fish. Um, they're attracted to Kim's light. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll see if we can get you guys. So we want to have you guys see them, but we also don't want to shine the lights directly on the horseshoe crabs if we can help it. But hopefully you can see them. Okay, Kelsey, we'll tell each horseshoe crab that you say hello. Thank you, Karen. So typically what we're going to see is um, it's usually going to be male and female. The females are much larger than the males. And they're usually going to be the ones up in the front with the little males clinging behind. I don't know about these two. These might be the males actually. <laughs> these are, that one in front is kind of small. I would guess. So how else can we tell? What about the front of their shell? Here they come. <laughs> Woo! It's hard to see from here, but the female, the front of her shell is um, kind of flat straight across. There they go. All right, we'll leave them alone. 
Um, and speaking of the uh, ways to tell male from females, Kim and I were lucky enough to see a male, a lone male, this evening. Um, so we posted a live video from earlier because we just couldn't wait. We wanted to take advantage of um, the opportunity to pick one up. Of course, we want to not have... Oh, there's, you can't see them. Can you see the fish? <laughs> Some things that are... Oh, yeah, there they go. Yeah. <laughs> Any people who like to fish at night out there? It's so beautiful at nighttime. One of the things we'll do next time when we can all meet back in person is do some seining at nighttime also. A little privacy, Meg, exactly. So we want to try not to disturb the horseshoe crabs. Um, like I said, we're not going to shine the light directly on them if we can help it. Uh, maybe shine it to the side. Um, their eyes are very sensitive to light. So we want to try and um, keep that to a minimum. We're also kind of searching. There's a nice uh, shallow flat. So this is really a perfect beach for horseshoe crabs. You can see where Kim is up there. It's nice sand. And um, we're right up here at about high tide. And um, there's a little bit of wave action, but it's pretty calm. Kim, if you can shine your flashlight out across, maybe down low. You can't see out too far, but that there's hardly any breeze. It's just, it's just a beautiful night to be here. So thank you so much again for joining us. <laughs> choo, choo, choo. All aboard the crab train. Woo, woo. That's right. So the reason why we're out here is that it's mating season for horseshoe crabs. Typically, May and June are really kind of the peak uh, mating season for horseshoe crabs. And they tend to come up onto the beaches. Um, the females will come up onto the beaches to lay their eggs. And it's usually high tide along the full moon and the new moon um, cycles. So, for those of you that are paying attention to the lunar cycles these days, <laughs> You may or may not realize, or if you take a look out your window, there's a, or here, <laughs> Woo. there's a beautiful little crescent-ish, almost half, moon up there. Um, so we're almost directly in between the full, well, the new and the full moon. The full moon is next weekend, as Kim has pointed out multiple times. <laughs> so the reason that we're here tonight looking for horseshoe crabs is that tonight was the best high tide at night that was easily accessible there goes a the silver side that was easily accessible to people um, when we are planning our nature programs of course they're not made for wildlife they're made for people so tonight's high tide really was a perfect time, 9.30 in the evening. Um, we usually have families that come. They bring little kids. So it's nice to have a, um, an early-ish in the evening time for that high tide. Tomorrow is about an hour later for the high tide. So um, you don't need to come to flag ponds to look for horseshoe crabs. You can go out if you live near the bay or uh, maybe even in some places in the river. Here we have some. Okay. Kim, you want to tell us anything about these guys? Well, you can see the female's kind of burying herself here. I'm not to get too hard with my light. Yeah, that's but perfect. They'll kind of just bury themselves, and that's how they'll um, deposit their eggs, which gives the males an opportunity to fertilize them after she kind of is done doing her thing. She'll scooch on back to the water. And they can lay up to 4,000 eggs in one clutch. One bunch of eggs. And then she'll come back up probably again 
um, multiple times in the season. Yep. So they have really kind of a broadcast strategy and just lay thousands of eggs, very few of which <laughs> will actually become adults. And so Kim mentioned earlier, we were talking about she used to work and live in New Jersey. And on the Delaware Bay, uh, much more so than around here, the spawning of the horseshoe crabs in the spring coincides, coincides with the spring migration of shorebirds. And those horseshoe crab eggs good are good eaten. <laughs> <laughs> um, who is it? The red knot? can, um, and maybe just everybody in general, or the red knots in particular, can gain like twice their, double their body weight um, just off those horseshoe crab eggs. And then they continue their migration um, way up north where they'll stay for the summer and nest. This is also part of the reason why, um, if you've ever seen horseshoe crabs, uh, stranded. Um, if you come down in the morning, I was going to say, you can go looking for horseshoe crabs not only in the middle of the night, like crazy people like Kim and I, but um, if you go out in the early morning, oftentimes, unfortunately, they will be stranded. If they're um, buried down in there, like this female especially is, they are sometimes stranded when the tide goes back out. so cool. How long do they live? Well, I don't remember. Laura, we'll have to get back to you. I'm totally blanking out. But I can tell you that they are a prehistoric animal. A lot of people call them horseshoe crabs have been on this planet since the dinosaurs were around. And they're pretty much unchanged. They haven't really evolved um, any other special adaptations. They're pretty much the way that they were back in prehistoric times. They're really, really cool. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna um, say goodbye to these two, give them their privacy. Thanks, you two, and move along. I want to say in terms of lifespan, I'm thinking 40 or so years. They live for a long time. Um, and what's really cool <laughs> is often they have this whole garden of creatures that live on their shells. Um, and as Kim said, they, they don't have a lot of changes. They haven't had a lot of new adaptations and, and changes in their body structure. Whoa, here we go. Here's two pairs. There we go. Thank you, Lisa. 20 to 40 years. You can definitely Usually see, females longer. Yeah, especially the size difference with this pair between the female and the male. Yeah, that male is little. But She's not... Um, too. If you see, like, I'm just going to put my hand for scale. Yeah, that's a beautiful. And um, I don't know if you guys at home can see, yeah, uh, about 85% covered in barnacles. Sometimes they've got seaweed attached to them. Yeah, that female is just beautiful. Uh, somebody, Lisa, mentioned um, tagging programs. So if we happen to see one that's tagged tonight, we'll try and get that number. Wow, can you guys look at this male? He's bigger than that other one. So now, so you can kind of see what happens. Horseshoe crabs are not into surfing because they're not super strong swimmers in the surf zone, uh, much like myself. Some of you, um, May. Yeah, they can swim, but they definitely um, prefer to use their legs to walk. Along the bottom. Along 
And they can they can move it along pretty darn quickly. That other pair, they're out of here. And we'll leave this this pair along. Uh, Lori Sampson. So yeah, maybe on our next batch we can talk a little bit about the horseshoe crab's eyes. Um, there's two big obvious eyes which are compound eyes, sort of like insects have. And then um, there's another set of simple eyes that almost look like nostrils in the front. And then there are other pairs of sort of light sensing eyes, more simple sort of things. Here's, oh gosh, look at this pair. And I have to wonder, I mean, sometimes their eyes are just completely covered over. Yeah, so like this one, you can see it on this side though. So here's one of the compound eyes right here. Right there, sorry. Wow, just beautiful. So the simple eyes would be... Can you point to Kim? Okay. <laughs> All right, so much for a nice calm evening. Let's leave these two. <laughs> wow, look at this surf. So maybe a big boat just came. <laughs> Kim Adams says hi. Oh no, it's Leah. Leah says hi. <laughs> Horseshoe crab fashion trends. Oh my god. That would be so awesome. Whoa, here's a whole party. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, so we've got three pairs. Yeah, sometimes you can't even see the females. They're buried down Talk so louder, deep. Kim. Like down here, there's a female buried. You can't yeah, even really see they're her. Like in front of and with that pair also over there. Again, this is another nice big female. Oh, here's her simple. Yeah, let me come around. And we'll take a look at the eyes here real quick. You can see all the scratches. Let's can you shine your headlamp maybe to the side more? Just getting a whole lot of light. And that you can't even see. Whew. I can't even see his eyes. It's just, just okay. Wow, awesome. Um, I mean, I guess we'll post this video later. I have not been keeping track. I'm bad at counting. What time is it? It's 9:50. Okay. So we'll go a little bit further. Um, wow. So if this wave action keeps up, that's also not going to be helpful. But all right, we've got some more. There's another beautiful. Look at those two. <laughs> this is some whoa, serious, serious uh, ha Halloween costume opportunity here. Um, Kim Alex says, "I love this video." <laughs> And TRN Laura, do they still harvest horseshoe crabs for their blood for medical research? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually just read an article that said that they're, they're finally, they finally found a way to synthesize the, the properties in the horseshoe crab blood that they're able to really start pulling back. So I don't know if you can hear Kim. She said um, they're just now starting to be able to synthesize that, the LAL, um, which comes from horseshoe crab blood, limulus amoebocyte lysate, which is used in medical research. Um, and what we're going to do is post some information later. Horseshoe crabs are, um, are cool. <laughs> and just also have really helped people out in a lot of different ways. Um, a lot of medical oh. research. Sorry, I 
thought it was a tag. No. I got excited. But it's still horseshoe crabs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they like check out this male short tail. The Telson. And look at his giant. Look at those giant barnacles on that guy. So they can um, regrow parts that are lost or broken. And I have seen some really awesome, I'll have to see if I can find the pictures. They, um, I found some horseshoe crabs that have like windows through their shell. It's just amazing to me that they're alive. So that female's, the front of her shell is kind of like a bulldozer. Yeah, you can see her lifting up the sand. Right, we're just gonna go for another little stretch. Um, we're just about to the point on the beach where the um, the shoreline curves around back towards the land and towards the pier. Um, so here's maybe one more pair. Yeah. And let me just finish what I was saying before: is you don't have to come to flag ponds. Oh, this one, this one's missing its tail. Oh no, it's not. It's just buried. Um, you don't have to come to flag ponds to see horseshoe crabs, although, of course, we would love to have you come. Right now, unfortunately, flag ponds is only open for Calvert County residents right now um, because of the, the COVID restrictions. But... Yeah. We're here after hours, especially for this program. But um, you can look on iNaturalist, for one to see where horseshoe crabs have been sighted. Um, and if you see horseshoe crabs and are able to take a picture of them, please do post them to iNaturalist so that we have an idea of what beaches are important for them. Uh, you want to, once more, just to review, May and June are their peak spawning times. They are in the bay most of the rest of the year, but we don't see them because they're in the deeper water. So May and June, at least in this part of the country, um, and then around the full and the new moon are the highest high tides. And you want the highest high tide that you can get, which happens when it's dark out. Another good time to go looking for horseshoe crabs is um, early in the morning and there might still be some out spawning Ooh, oh grab him oh grab him God. oh i think he doesn't have a tail all right so this will be our our big finale thanks to um frank here so we finally get a view of the underside of the horseshoe crabs kim do you want to talk about that sure so you can see all of his little legs and it gives you a really good idea of um, why horseshoe crabs are actually closer related to things like spiders and scorpions than they are to actually what we think of as crabs. Um, so this is a male and he's got in the front here, you see his front claws look like little boxing gloves. They look different from the rest of his claws, which are like little scissor fingers. So that's one way, it's a quick, easy way to be able to tell a male from a female if you're picking it up, holding it. Right here in the middle is where his mouth is. He's got like, almost like a toothbrush right there. That's like, it's like thick bristles covering his mouth right there. Down here on this part, these are his gills. And those are called book gills. They look almost like pages in a book. They're very thin layers and they kind of flap back and forth. You can see his, uh, his tail is a little... <laughs> Jesse said, look at this dumpy Telson. <laughs> yes, little yep. dumpy Telson there. And their tails are really fragile, actually. They're held on by a really thin muscle down here. If you do see them and you're inclined to pick them up, you should pick them up by the shell. You don't want to pick them up by their tail. Then things like that will happen. Their tails are really useful to them. Their tails are not a weapon in any way. They're not 
you know, they're not a sword. They're not going to stab you or anything like that. It wouldn't hurt any more than like a stick would if you were to step on it. But um, they use their tails to help them swim, to help them flip themselves over if they do get caught upside down or stuck down deep in the sand. So we want to make sure we take care of their tails. We don't want to be picking them up. Okay, one more close look. We'll let this male get back about his business and Kim and I are going to sign off. So thanks so much everybody. Meg, thank you. It's so good to Wait see that there's night. people out there. Thank you for throwing all those comments <laughs> out there. And um, I'll, I'll publish this video to the Calvert Nature Society Facebook page. So if you have folks that didn't see it tonight, um, please do share it around. Uh, we're going to be doing lots more stuff um, this summer, so please keep your eyes on both the Calvert Nature Society Facebook page. We have a Calvert Nature Society YouTube page and the um, calvertparks.org website. So thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Happy horseshoe crabbing! Bye! Bye. You want to watch him go? Oh, yeah, here. This will be the perfect release. Doo -doo -doo. Into the dark. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Stay Bye, well. Thanks.